Hey everyone, Arja Shadow here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Blue Skies. So previously, we were assigned our roles for what to do for the festival, and I made my decision to bake with Natsuki. Anyways, it's already Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Monster Truck Rally. Okay, no. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Natsuki's upcoming visit. Yeah. Well, I'm increasingly anxious because I don't know what's gonna happen. At this part of the game, you'd usually end up running into Sayori and... Well, but anyways. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. I wonder if she'll act any different when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, she's been texting me a lot. We sent each other... Or, let's see, we sent each other one after exchanging numbers to double-check, but it turned into a conversation. She's almost a different personality on the phone, using tons of emoji and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things, but I kind of saw that one coming. I meander around the house, anxiously awaiting Natsuki's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me to let me know she's outside the front door. I don't understand why she couldn't have just rang the doorbell. Tch, because who rings the doorbell anymore? Well, it's like, in reality, I would appreciate that. <clears throat> oh god, my... But whatever. Okay, this is pretty much the same as the purist mod. I'm sorry, it's like... I'm gonna be... I'm the kind of person who's like, oh, hey, I remember this from such and such place. I rush over to the door and open it. Okay, this is definitely new. And she didn't say, sup. Um, hi. My mind goes blank as I completely forget what I was going to greet her with. Hey. It's like, hey there. Or, hello there. I'm not sure what I expected, but seeing Natsuki in her casual clothing surprises me. I kind of like this music. Anyway, it, gets, it doesn't surprise me since I've seen her with this outfit like 5,000 times by this point. It's such a huge difference. Ah, it's such a huge difference from her uniform. Well, what were you expecting her uniform and her casual clothes to be the same? With such cute clothing, she almost looks like a different person. Frankly, I'm at a loss for words. Am I so beautiful that you have no words left? Daniel, why are you just staring at me? Because you're so beautiful that I have no words left. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Jeez, I just got here. It'll be a long afternoon if you keep acting weird just because you're not used to seeing me out of school. Yeah, that's pretty much... I guess that's pretty much what the problem is. Right. Okay, now move. I'm coming in. I quickly step out of the way as Natsuki walks inside. Over her shoulder, she's carrying a large bag made of a thick plastic. Is that all cooking stuff? No, it's the toys for the children for the orphanage. I point to Natsuki's bag. Yep. I wasn't going to come all this way just to find out you're missing something important. Okay, and so far I'm guessing... Okay, so Sayori is not going to be involved in this. Okay, good. That was one complaint I had with the Purist mod. It followed the original game a bit too quickly, or too closely, and... The stuff with Sayori, and getting mixed up, and this... Anyways, speaking of important, did you get everything I asked you to get? Natsuki asked me to go out and buy some things if I didn't already have them on hand. Which reminds me, I haven't done that yet! Um, so don't get too mad, but... Oh my god, really, did you not do it yet? I say that so she might go a bit easier on me when I tell her I forgot to go shopping. I'm disappointed in you, MC. Even the original MC from the original universe wasn't, didn't forget to go shopping. See, even Natsuki's disappointed in you. 
judging by the look on her face, I doubt it can- I doubt it helped. Oh, don't tell me you forgot! Okay, I won't tell you. Are you kidding me? I wish I was. I'm as disappointed in him as you are. I know, I know, I'm sorry. What were you doing all weekend that you forgot to go shopping? Uh, I marathoned ReZero. I don't know. Um, well, I was practicing my poem for the festival. Okay, well, that's better. Which isn't a compl which isn't completely a lie. I did actually spend some time reciting my poem to myself. Natsuki, meanwhile, looks at me with disbelief. You were... practicing your poem. Yes. Yeah. Natsuki sighs at... Er, yeah, Natsuki sighs as her expression softens a bit. It's like, see, he is trying. He can't help it if he's a moron. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'll give you a pass this time. I expected you to say that you were playing video games all weekend. A part of me was too, or saying that he was watching anime. No lie. But don't think you're completely off the hook. We still need those baking supplies if we want to get anything done. Hmm. I wonder what's for dinner. Okay, no. Well, I do have some money, and it's only like a mile to town. Do you want to just go buy the stuff we need? Uh. Oh. It's like, it's our first date! A shopping date! Okay, no. Well, it's not like we have any other choice. No. It's either we do or we don't. And I'm pretty sure that you do want to. Otherwise, we don't have cupcakes. Just so you know, it's not a date or anything. Oh, darn. Well, what I just said about our first date is now null and void. Um, alright. I totally wasn't thinking of it that way, but sure, whatever works for you. Whatever you need to tell yourself to get through the day. Natsuki sets down her bag down next to the door as I head upstairs to retrieve my money. When I come down, I see Natsuki standing in the doorway, her hands on her hips. Come on, dummy! We don't have all day! Yes, dear. I'm coming, I'm coming. We both part from my house and head down... Er, head towards town. So what kind of cupcakes are we gonna make? Chocolate. Hmm. Natsuki ponders this for a bit. I'm thinking just normal chocolate cupcakes with vanilla frosting. Alright, we're already on the same track of mind. Already our minds are becoming one. Okay, well. Oh, okay. But, I feel like we should do something special. It is a festival, after all. Uh, I don't know. Something special with the cupcakes. We could draw funny faces on them. Yeah, but like, something more than just the flavors. I want it to... Or, I want it to have to do with the actual look of the cupcakes. Kind of like those cat cupcakes on my first day, right? Yes, exactly! Natsuki Fang. It's been a while since I said that. Hmm. Something related to the look of the cupcakes. Well, it is a literature event. So are you going to do the words on the cupcakes? Like in the original universe? Okay, more or less. Maybe you could put kanji characters on each one. You know, because this is Japan, even though the game doesn't tell you that. Or is it Japan? Okay, no time for an existential crisis. Like, in the frosting? Yeah, every cupcake could have a different character on it, and people could choose a cupcake based on which characters they like the most. That's actually not that bad of an idea. Okay, well then what would your idea have been? Natsuki looks at the ground, seemingly disappointed she didn't come, with, come up with that first. Well, do you want to do it? Considering that's the best idea we have, I guess so. Okay, I guess her idea wasn't so good. Whatever that might have been. Alright then. By now we've finally reached downtown. Downtown. Which almost looks like an offshoot of Akihabara. 
Natsuki spots a kitchen supply store, and we both quickly head towards it. Uh... I think this is also from another mod. Is that Pikachu? Okay, no. Once inside, Natsuki holds up her phone in front of my face. I've already texted you what we need, it, or what we need so just go off that for your list of supplies to get. Will we need anything special for the characters? Just a smaller frosting nozzle. I'll get that. You just focus on your stuff. Sounds like a plan. I'm down like a clown. Natsuki heads off into a nearby aisle while I pull out my phone. I scroll through my text and eventually find the list she sent me. Well then, let's start with the French vanilla extract. Within a couple of minutes, I found everything on the list. Well, that was easy. As I place the final ingredient into my basket, Natsuki walks up to me. She dumps her stuff in my basket and walks with me to the register. I hand over my money, and before I know it, we're already walking back to my house. We arrive quickly and immediately get to work. It only takes about 10 minutes before the entire kitchen is a mess. Utensils, bowls, and spilled ingredients cover the countertops. Chaos everywhere! Natsuki has her focus on the cupcakes themselves while I work on the frosting. Hey, where's the food coloring? Don't tell me you forgot it. Still in the bag on the table. Why? Okay, good. I'm gonna color the batter different colors so it looks even cooler, even if the flavor is still chocolate or vanilla. Creative idea. You think we should do that to the frosting as well? Yeah, just give me the food coloring once I'm done. Alright. I've noticed Natsuki has been a lot more calm and friendly towards me ever since we started baking. Because she's in the zone. She's been instructing me on what to do, but it's been more friendly advice rather than a command. Do this, slave! Okay, yeah, she's not Ishtar. The only explanation I've come up with is that cooking puts Natsuki's mind at ease and makes her less hostile. Yeah, she's in the zone. But it's not like that's uncommon. Talking about or doing something they're passionate about puts a smile on anyone's face. Monica with playing the piano, Yuri with reading, Sayori with eating, and Natsuki with baking. Daniel, come on, focus! Natsuki's voice interrupts my thoughts. You're spilling the batter! Oh, sorry. I resume the stir- uh, I resume stirring the frosting while Natsuki drops the food coloring into the batter. Once she's done with that, she scoops the batter into little baking cups and places them in a tray. Preheat to 350. Natsuki mumbles instructions to herself as she messes around with the oven. I hear a beep and she walks over to check on my progress. Hey, is the icing good? Natsuki looks at the bowl with a judgmental expression. So grumpy. You're getting there. You just have to... Natsuki takes a whisk, takes the whisk from my hands and starts stirring. Really beat the crap out of it! Jeez. After a few seconds, I retrieve the whisk from Natsuki and follow in her example. You gotta knead it! Er... Okay, well not knead it. This isn't dough. Good! You're a fast learner! Thanks! You're a good teacher. Natsuki's face turns slightly red. I yeah, I am! I chuckle at Natsuki's gloating as she walks back to her workspace. Once the icing... Once the icing's a good consistency, I retrieve the food coloring from Natsuki. Hey, watch where you're putting your hands, dummy! I don't want you getting icing everywhere! I look down at my hands and realize they're covered in icing. Oops! Oh jeez, how'd I not notice that? Don't ask me! You're the one who didn't notice his hands were covered in icing! Natsuki looks at me with a smirk. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, being smug, are we? That smug laugh. That oh-so-smug laugh! Well, take that! I wipe my index finger on Natsuki- <laughs> What? I wop my in- I wop? I wipe my index finger on Natsuki's cheek, leaving a glob of icing behind. 
Natsuki shoots me a look of both shock and anger. Oh, you didn't. Now it's my turn to be smug. That oh-so-smug laugh. Oh, but I did. Natsuki's face suddenly lights up. Without warning, she dips her finger in the frosting bowl and swipes it across my entire face. Ha 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 ha! You look so dumb. I walk over to the sink and grab a paper towel. So, that's how it's gonna be, huh? I dramatically wipe my hands as Natsuki braces herself. This is war! Yep! Then so be it. I take the paper towel and attempt to shove it in Natsuki's face. Dude, what the hell? But she swipes the towel out of my hands and throws it to the side. Hey, hey! Hey, hey, you, you, I don't like your girlfriend. I slowly back up and put my hands up. It's like, I surrender! It doesn't have to be like this! Natsuki ignores my call for a truce and s tries to swipe icing across my face again. This time, I catch her wrist as she swoops in. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. I will do what I must. You will try. She tries to fight back with her other hand, but I grab that one as well. Okay, well she did try. And I did do what I must, I guess. Natsuki Fang! Close up in high definition. <laughs> Stop! Only if you apologize for getting frosting on my face. You're the one that started it. But I only did it a little. You smeared it across my entire face. Now, if people were to see me, they'll call me they'll call me Frosting Face. Now apologize. Fine, fine. I'm sorry. Thank you. Now apologize to me. I'm sorry as well. Thank you. Alright, that's that. I'd say I win this one. One, two, three, I win! Oh yeah? Suddenly I feel a sharp pain in my right shin. She kicked you in the shin! I let go of Natsuki's wrist and stumble back. Ow! Did you just kick me? I warned you! I told you, or wherever I said that, she's a little bit scrappy. Ah, jeez. I hold my leg in pain as Natsuki stands triumphantly. Don't underestimate me. Like I said, she's a little but scrappy. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. And? And I surrender. <laughs> I win! You may have won the battle, but not the war. Oh my... It's like, we're never gonna get anything done. If one kick can send you down, winning the war will be a piece of cake. A piece of cupcake. I roll my eyes, inciting another laugh from Natsuki. Alright, we should probably get back to work. Yeah, otherwise we're not gonna get anything done. Yeah, probably. Natsuki and I wipe our faces off and pick up where we left off. I scoop some icing into a separate bowl and color the rest of it a light pink. Natsuki pulls the batch of cupcakes out of the oven and puts the another batch in. Or puts the other batch in. Using the food coloring, I dye the icing and set it and set aside black. Hmm? That it almost doesn't make sense to me. Set aside the color black? Why'd you do that? I don't know. I'm confused. Oh, Okay, it is... Okay. For the Kanshi characters. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was here like... Wait, what? Oh, well, I guess... The coloring they, they meant. Finish up mixing the food coloring and then give it to me. Why? I'm gonna put it in the frosting bag. Duh. She gestures towards... The small plastic bag she brought with her. Alright. I quickly finish mixing in the coloring and hand Natsuki the bowl. She scoops the icing into a bag and ties a thin nozzle around the end. Put this to the side for now. We still need to frost the cupcakes before we can add the characters. Speaking of which, 
Natsuki brings the tray of cupcakes over to the table. Let's get started. Alright. Woo! All done! Well, that was fast. We both look triumphantly over the frosted trays of cupcakes. Yeah, they look pretty cute. Kind of fitting, seeing you're the one who made them. W what's that supposed to mean? I was about to say, like, what do you mean by that? Oh, please, we're not at school. It's not like anyone's judging you. Except for me. Okay, no. Just admit that you're cute. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm not cute! Fine, fine. Whatever you say. Just focus on doing the characters. Jeez. Here, let me show you how to do it. Natsuki quickly teaches me how to use the frosting bags, and we quickly get to work. Finally! Yeah, finally. It took us longer than expected, but we finally finished and placed them neatly in rows on trays. That was fun! I guess. What, you didn't have fun? I guess baking can be kind of fun. I used to do some baking with my mom. Although, well, since her passing, I never... I just haven't really done any on my own. No, I did. I just didn't expect it to take that long. It wouldn't have taken that long if we didn't get... Er, it wouldn't have taken that long if we didn't have to go to the store. I said I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Admit it, you enjoyed our first date. I just wish we had more time so we could read some manga or something. But I really have to get home. My dad's making dinner tonight. Ah, uh, lucky. I'm on my own for dinner tonight. Frankly, I'm not really that hungry. I might just skip it. No! Oh. Yeah, I think Nazuki would have a few words to say about skipping meals. Nazuki's sudden outburst shocks me. I stare at her in disbelief. I mean, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, it's not good for you in all reality. You should always appreciate every meal you get. Wow, dinner must be really important to you. <laughs> you have no idea. More than you can imagine. Exactly. Growing up, we'd really have family dinner when everyone was home. We'd only really have family dinner when everyone was home. Considering both my parents worked a lot, it was a rare occurrence. Especially now. Natsuki and I sit in an awkward silence before she starts for her bag. I should get going. R right, I'll walk you out. Natsuki collects her things and I walk her outside. I felt like the afternoon flew by too quickly. However, it was nice spending time with her. It was an opportunity to get to know her better. Well, I guess I'll see you then. It was fun cooking with you. Yeah, we should do it again sometime. Huh? I'm just saying, if you ever want to bake something, I'd be glad to help. That's... Natsuki steps closer and looks up at me. Her expression is tense, as if she's trying to hide her emotions. Conceal, don't feel. Really nice of you. I open my mouth to say something, but Natsuki quickly pulls away. I, I gotta go! Bye! Bye. And with that, she walked out of my life. Natsuki quickly rushes off and I'm left alone. Alone again, naturally. Guess I better get to cleaning. And nothing eventful happens, I assume. It's the day of the festival, and nothing scary better happen to me, or to Sayori, or to anyone. <laughs> the preparations for the event should be nearly complete, given all the work everyone's put in over the weekend. I managed to carry out all the cupcakes by myself by carefully stacking four trays in a box. Natsuki is already texting up a storm, but I can't respond, thanks to my hands being full. I smile, putting my phone away. Her personality even shows through her texts. Funnily enough, 
I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Natsuki at the festival. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> but knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. It's been a while though. Where's Sayori? No, don't do this to me. We're meant to walk together, but she's late again. Don't do this to me. I don't want to leave her behind, but if she takes much longer, I'm going to be late for school. More time passes. There's going to be a moment of decision soon if she doesn't arrive. Just as I'm getting ready to leave, I spot her, slowly making her way down the street. Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> Man. She's carrying a large sack in her hands, and I'm surprised she hasn't... She isn't running over to me. Isn't she aware of how late she is? Sayori, where have you been? We could have been late for school. Ugh, I know, I'm sorry. I, um... Overslept again? Or couldn't decide what to have for breakfast again? She immediately pouts. Grumpy. You're such a meanie sometimes. I'm just glad that I'm seeing you. Because... Yeah, I guess if you don't know the original game, then you probably know what I'm trying to get at here. <laughs> you know my teasing is all in good fun, right? She mumbles something under her breath. Of course! Of course. It looks like she's back to her normal self again. A definite relief. Yes. More than a definite relief for me. I felt a little guilty in not spending Sunday with her. But then again, it was also probably wise to give her space. So I wonder how this would have played out if I had gone with her route. Then again, Natsuki also needed help. But so did Yuri, but then, well, Yuri doesn't want to have anything to do with me. I point to the sack she's carrying, which contains an assortment of colorful little gift bags. Ah, are those the gift bags you were working on over the weekend? Yep, I managed to get everything we need. Candy, quotes, and bookmarks. It was a lot of fun. Although it was kind of hard to stop myself from eating the sweets. Oh. <laughs> and did you manage it? <laughs> People won't notice if a sweet or two goes missing, right? Well, as long as it's only that many. I can't help but laugh. That's such a Sayori thing to say and do. I'm glad you're feeling better today, Sayori. And I'm sorry if I was a bit too invasive on Friday. I just worry a lot, that's all. Because I've seen a future where bad things happen to you and it literally just messed me up forever. It's okay, Daniel. It really is. It's sweet that you were concerned. But yeah, I'm fine. It was just a little rain cloud. <laughs> Doki Doki rain clouds. It's like, can I go one episode without mentioning another mod? <laughs> it's like, let's play a game every time I mention another mod. Okay, no. Although, I'm kind of nervous for the festival. Honestly, I don't blame you for that. It's kind of nerd-wracking, isn't it? I mean, I know how much it means to Monica, but at the same time, I didn't realize how intimidating reciting poetry to a bunch of strangers can be. Yeah, I was all for it. Oh. I was all for it back in the club room, but now that the actual day is here... She looks a little nervous. I reach over and give her a squeeze on the shoulder. Are you still holding the cupcakes? We'll be fine, don't worry. I know how much you like poetry, plus your poems are great. I just hope my own performance is up to standard. Oh, don't be silly, Daniel. They'll love your poem, I just know it. Even if it is just 20 random words that don't make any coherent... ...thoughts or sentences. I chuckle, admiring the definitive optimism that really makes Sayori... Well, Sayori. Guess we'll find out. <laughs> By the way, are you doing anything after the festival? Anything fun? You know, because if you want, I could swing by and invite you over for some coffee and... Okay, no. <laughs> No, this is for Natsuki. Nope. I haven't really planned that far ahead. I'm not great at doing that anyway. <laughs> well, I'm from Co-Metro. 
we plan ahead. Okay, no. I doubt anyone even knows where Co-Metro is. I'm kind of hoping we finish early so I can have the rest of the day off, to be honest. I'll ride a day off. So what you're saying, what you're really saying is, you just want to go home and sleep, right? Ooh, look at how many students there are! How many clubs are having their own little event today? I guess it's good that she didn't hear that. What a tactical change of topic that was. Or maybe she... Or maybe it was a tactical change. Our school is in sight, and there's lots of students milling around. It's a little strange to think that there's so many fellow students around, and yet I've still been feeling so lonely. Maybe because there are a bunch of faceless silhouette creatures like in Tokyo Mirage Sessions or Persona, or at least before joining the Literature Club. Times like these make me grateful that Sayori told me about it, about, about it the, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Times like these make me grateful that Sayori told me about the club in the first place. I don't know, probably quite a few. By the way, Sayori. Hmm? What's up, Daniel? I just wanted to say, uh, no matter how the festival, no matter how this festival goes, I'm just really grateful you told me about your club and let me join. I've had a lot of fun so far. I scratch the back of my head nervously as Sairi looks curiously at me. Seriously, are you still holding the cupcakes? I've never been good ex at expressing myself, and it probably shows. I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, thank you. It's been so fun being able to spend time with you again, too. It really takes me back. You don't have to thank me for anything, silly. I've enjoyed it too. After all, it would be lonely if things could... It would be lovely if things could go back to how they used to be. Things would be lonely. No. <laughs> how they used to? What do you mean? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Strange choice of words. What could she mean by this? Very poor choice of words. Well, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. As we enter the courtyard and make our way to the, our meeting room, she breaks the silence by giggling. Something funny? Is it my face? Okay, no. I just thought of a way to steal one of Natsuki's cupcakes without her realizing. Oh, well, don't try it. Uh, are you sure that's a good idea? Natsuki might be little, but you know better than I do that she can be really fiery. Like I said, she's little but scrappy. Oh, don't worry about her. She might seem a bit mean on the outside, but she's harmless. Don't let her fool you. What? Let me ask you, did she kick you in the shin? No? Then I rest my case. Well, I'd rather her than me. Do 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 do. Okay, I like this song. Almost sounds like some. Let the Mario Star music. Daniel, Sayori, Monica, it's good to see you guys. Trust me, I'm just happy to see Sayori. Do you want to come in and give me a hand? Okay. Oh, you meant Monica is pract er, practicing. Monica is placing the little little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared. That has all that has all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. Is it by Walt freaking Whitman? Okay, no. So that's the one I'll be performing. Hey, do you guys want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I put down the trays of cupcakes I'm holding and grab one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Don't take your eyes off the pam- er, don't take your eyes off the cupcakes. Oh yeah, they really did. Hmm? They look really pretty. Some of that this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize the girls' poems from the ones they performed during our practice. 
Just then, Natsuki bursts into the room, her school bag swinging wildly. Yuri trails in behind her, carrying a rolled up banner and a large duffel bag. Oh boy. Alright, it's festival time! Wow, you guys got here before me? I thought I was pretty early. Ugh, I'm sorry for being the last one here. I'm glad that some preparation is already underway, though. It should take less time to set everything up this way. Yeah, let's get to... Let's work hard, everyone. Daniel! What? I jump at the sudden outburst. I yes Yes, dear. Where are the cupcakes? Don't tell me you forgot them. It is normal to be scared or is it normal to be scared by a tiny underclassman girl? I mentally shake myself. I really gotta get it together. Relax, they're right here. Just hold on a minute. I step over to where I put the box of cupcakes and begin unpacking the trays. Don't lay them out so messily. Quite the bossy little princess, eh? Madam Fortress Mommy. Um, then if you wouldn't mind... Sayori, can you help me with these? Yuri gestures at her bag, which Sayori nods cheerfully. To which... I help Natsuki with the cupcakes while Yuri and Sayori start putting up decorations. Meanwhile, Monica continues putting down pamphlets. It isn't long before Natsuki has carefully rearranged the cupcakes in a neat formation. Looks really good, if I do say so myself. I'd have to agree. We make a pretty good team! Yeah. Hey Daniel, next time we do something like this, I can carry some trays too. Uh, it's totally fine with me. And my arms are longer, after all, so I can carry more. <laughs> Still, we're a team, aren't we? I gotta carry my weight, too. I'm not some helpless damsel in distress, you know. Or a helpless shoujo manga heroine. Alright, mister. Can it. So grumpy. As I laugh, I glance over at Sayori and Yuri. They put up a banner with an inspirational quote written on a colorful gradient of colors of the sky. Or, of the colors of the sky. A good writer possesses not only his own spirit, but also the spirit of his friends. Ah, that's a quote by the German philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche. Okay. I'm so sorry. It's like, hello from the future, I'm sorry that I messed up your name. I'm sorry. Nietzsche. I don't know. He's had some very interesting thoughts, although there are some that I don't quite agree with. Oh, I think I've heard of him. I haven't. As usual, Yuri outclasses me with her intellect. I'm an idiot! It seems that they've also hung up a curtain of origami paper tied to ribbons on the doorway. Upon closer inspection, each paper has a different kanji character written on it. Oh. It's like great minds think alike. Hey, it looks like you did something similar to Natsuki with your kanji curtain. Is that so? I'll have to take a look at what she's done after I finish setting up. She gestures to a few candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. Yuri said that's an essential oils diffuser. Huh? <laughs> yes, it's for aromatherapy. It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Huh. I'm excited to see how it works later. It looks like all the preparations are almost finished now. It feels like there's something missing, though. Suddenly, I notice a large bag sitting forward lonely by itself to the side. That's Sayori's, isn't it? Sayori, did you forget to set up your part? Ah! Did I? I did! She rushes over to the bag and quickly empties it out. It's full of... S Small, colorful bags tied shut with thin ribbons. Oh, don't worry. Er, oops. Don't worry, I'll help you. <laughs> we start organizing the goodie bags in neat rows on the desk closest to the door. I peek inside one of them as we do. You can take a bag if you want. Inside the bag, I find candy, stickers, inspirational quotes from poems on some sort of cardstock, and bookmarks. 
looks like there's a good mix of things in here. I chose only the best candy for the festival. And I carry only the finest. And the best quotes. The best books... Er, pff, the best bookmarks as well. You betcha! We laugh as we finish up our tasks. Or task. I take a bag, fish out a candy, and pop it into my mouth. Sire really does have good taste. The chocolate and toffee seems to melt on my tongue. Can I have one too, Daniel? No. I can't resist those puppy dog eyes. Thanks! You're the best! And don't you forget it. Okay. Oh, hello. By the time we finish, it looks like everyone else is done too. Man, look at this. The classroom is now darkened and lit up by the ambient lighting of the candles. A delicate floral scent wafts through the air, courtesy of Yuri's essential oils. Is it jasmine oil? Sayori and I head to the three other girls, who are huddled near the front of the classroom, murmuring to each other. Is it about time to start yet? Almost. We wrote that we were going to start at 10 a.m. on our posters, and that's in... 10 minutes. Are people actually going to show up for this? Don't be so negative. Some people have shown up already, and I'm sure that more will file in soon. You guys don't have to be worrying so much about it. I've got full faith in all of you. I've seen all your poems. It's been amazing watching each and every one of you find and nurture your own unique writing styles. She smiles encouraging at each of us. To her credit, her words are helpful. Even though I haven't been able or I haven't been part of this club as far along as the other three. Even Daniel? Natsuki! Sayo and Moni. Sayo and Moni. Weekdays at 5 on ABC. It was just a joke, jeez. Thought some humor would lighten the mood. Well, not... Well, what would be... This wouldn't be self-depreciating humor. It would only be if I made that on myself. Okay, well. Ah, sorry. Just trying to make sure everyone's in the best frame of mind before we start. It's okay, Monica. We all understand and appreciate that. Yeah, we know how much this club means to you. I want it to be a success, just as much as you do. Couldn't have put it better myself. Even though I've only been in the club for a few days, I felt really at home. Truth be told, I used to be kind of lonely. Alone again, naturally. Oh, well, not here. Knowing that I'm included, that I'm included in something with people like you guys always makes me feel better. Or makes me feel better. I haven't told anyone about how lonely I've been feeling. I'm a little nervous about how they'll react. Oh, oh, what a lonely boy. They all turn to me, varying degrees of emotions on their faces. Natsuki impassively looks to the side, while Yuri, or Sayori and Yuri give me expressions of concern. Does this look like concern to you? It's like, this is the face of customer satisfaction. And, well, anyways. Aw, oh, Daniel. I had no idea you felt that way. I'm sorry. I really hope we can change that. Okay, that's concern. But I'm so happy you feel welcome here, too. It's exactly what we wanted. Okay, also concern. I agree. No one should feel alone. I know it's quite a difficult thing to experience. Yep, Yuri and me both. I feel a warm flush of gratitude at their words. Why haven't you said anything, Monica? Okay, no. Thanks, guys. That means a lot. Also, Monica, I told Sayori this earlier, and I figured you might appreciate hearing this. Hmm? Well, no matter how the festival goes, I just wanted to say thank you. To all of you. Thanks to you guys, this lonely feeling has disappeared. You've all been so welcoming and accepting, and believe me, I'm really appreciative of that. So, even if this event doesn't quite go as planned, just know that I really love it here, and I'm so glad Sairi told me about this club. If others don't like what we have here, well, it's their loss, right? The girls nod in agreement, smiling at me. 
I had no idea my words would have such an impact, but I'm glad they did in the end. It feels so rewarding to be able to give back to the club for a change. Monica turns to me, eyes shining with appreciation. Thank you, Daniel. You're right. Hearing those words from a newcomer really makes me feel like I've, ex er, I've succeeded in my goals as president. After all, I want to create a place where people can feel comfortable and share literature, and what you've just said makes me feel like it was all worth it. She turns to face the others. See, guys, if we could show Daniel how amazing this club is, who's to say we can't show the other students the same thing? Don't see them as strangers. See them as potential club members. She's definitely got an inspiring way with words. Yeah, good thinking, Monica. What's the worst that could happen? They could boo me and humiliate me, and I run out of the room crying from public humiliation. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But if they say anything bad about my, about my cupcakes, I'm gonna kill them. <laughs> That's the second time she's... Or is that the second time? I don't know. Actually, yeah, she said, I'll kill you. If I bent her manga. Yuri giggles softly. I won't lie to you. I'm still quite nervous. But after hearing what you've said, Daniel, I realize there might be other lonely people out there. So let's have... Well, we're five less lonely people in the world. This club would be a, the perfect place for them. Yeah, we might even find more MAGA enthusiasts. Okay, well now she's kind of on board with this. Isn't that what Monica said? Or, yeah, I think it was Monica. That's the spirit. Okay, well, you've said it, so now I have to say it. That's the spirit. I swallowed my gum. That's the spirit. Now let's go and show the rest of the school just what the literature club is made of. As if on cue, a few people wander into the room, curiously looking around the room. It's like, dramatic irony. Monica confidently walks over and greets them. And so it begins. The day of reckoning is upon us. Monica and Sayori have greeted the newcomers and settled them in desk with, throughout the classroom. Some people are already helping themselves to cupcakes, and I notice Natsuki keeping an eye on them. It's like, you better like my cupcakes! Meanwhile, Yuri is nervously looking through a pamphlet. I can see her soundlessly mouthing the words to her poem. Now that I think about it, I should be getting some extra practice in as well. Before I can do so, though, Monica heads back towards us with Sayori in tow. Showtime, everyone! And here. We. Go. Let's do this, guys! Time to get this over with. I can do this. We group up and stand together in front of the classroom. And then we put our hands together in a circle and we're like, Go Literature Club! Okay, no. Monica steps up to the podium and clears her throat, drawing the room's attention to her. Okay, everyone! Welcome to the Literature Club's poetry performance. My name is Monica, as some of you may know. Some girl sitting near the front of the classroom wave at her. Those must be her friends. And I'm the president of the club. Accompanying me is the vice president, Sayori. Hi, guys! And the rest of our club members, Yuri, Natsuki, and last but not certainly... Er, ah. Yuri, Natsuki, and last, but certainly not least, Daniel. We all wave back at the students with varying degrees of enthusiasm. Uh, hi guys! And you can't see me waving. <laughs> uh, why do I... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I do things like that when there's no camera. I hope you'll enjoy our poetry, and that we'll be able to help contribute to a memorable festival. Literature is amazing in its abilities to connect us to the human condition, and we really hope that this event will encourage others to start participating as well. Our club will gladly accept. Ah. Our club will gladly welcome any new members, from those who love words and writing as well, to anyone who's simply just curious and wants to learn more. After the scheduled performances, we'll be opening up the stage for anyone else who wants to perform, so don't be shy. Remember, bring your own poems. And now, without further ado, 
I'll start with my poem. The way they fly. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and I head off to settle down in the frontmost desk. Saving the uh, saving the seat at the end for Monica. She stands there, alone, yet still radiating confidence. After flashing a smile and a wink at us, she begins. Each word is crystal clear and exudes emotion. Somehow her recitation is better than it was only a few days ago. She must have practiced hard to achieve perfection. The classroom is silent at first, drinking in her words. After a few moments, however, some whispering starts up in the back of the classroom. Hey, you in back! Shut up! I guess that that's inevitable, but it still doesn't make it any less annoying. I exchange a look with Natsuki, who rolls her eyes at the disruptions. Sorry pats my hand and gives me an encouraging smile. He's comforting, as always. As Monica's poem progresses, more and more people wander in. M normally this would be a good thing, but they're making a lot of noise. Down and back! Thankfully, they simmer down once they realize Monica's speaking, but the damage has already been done. Uh-oh. She reaches, er, she reaches the end of her poem, the last few words resonating in the classroom. A round of applause fills the room and Monica beams at everyone, patiently waiting for them to finish. Thank you for listening, everyone. I hope you enjoyed my poem, and that it gave you a flavor of what it's... Er, and that it gave you a flavor of what this club is like. For our newcomers, welcome! We're just in... Er, yeah, we're just in the midst of showing you all of our poems. For the benefit of those who have just joined, she quickly reintroduces everyone. Anyway, I'm Nexus Natsuki. Take it away. Okay. Natsuki stumbles slightly as she makes her way to the front of the class. I guess the nerves are really getting to her. It doesn't help that someone sniggers, causing her to turn to glare at them. Sari notice seems to notice this too, but she hastens to shoot Natsuki a reassuring smile. Natsuki stands at the front of the classroom with her poem in hand, slight traces of irritation still visible on her face. Anyway, my poem's called Jump. She takes a deep breath and begins her recital. Just as I was hoping, she's able to inject her trademark bouncy style into the performance, bringing the words to life. She doesn't quite radiate the confidence Monica did, but her unique style shines through, giving the poem a flow and rhythm. While simple, it's effective. My heart sinks as I start picking up on the newcomers having their own conversations in the back of the room. I'm hit with a surge of anger. How can they be so inconsiderate? And that's when I throw my shoe at them. Okay, no. It's clear that they aren't paying any attention. And, <clears throat> and from the pause and change in Natsuki's tone, she's clearly picked up on it as well. Why can't they just save their stupid selfish conversations for after our performances? Her poem comes to an end, but unlike with Monica's, there's a slight, awkward moment of silence. Once again, there's a round of applause, but it's clear that the audience's engagement isn't quite as strong. Great performance, Natsuki. I really like the rhythm of that poem. Natsuki forces a smile and makes her way back to her seat. It's clear that she is upset. Anyway, our Vice President Sayori is next to perform. Hi everyone! I hope you like my poem! <laughs> she cheerfully skips up to the front, poem in hand. As she turns to face us, she looks a little nervous, fidgeting slightly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little nervous. It's okay, Sayori. Just remember what we've practiced. I've got full faith in you. Yeah, you got this. This one's called My Meadow. I was about to say, can we have the music back? She begins her poem. Okay, this music sounds a little different. Her soft voice guides us through the recital, and there's a remarkable contrast between her cheerful inflection and the more bittersweet nature of the words. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice people casually flicking cupcake wrappers onto the floor along with the candy wrappers lying on the tables. Worse still, the talking is getting louder and more noticeable. 
Monica looks around at the perpetrators, frowning at them. One of the students lets out a loud yawn, making absolutely no effort to hide it. Another student picks up one of the quotes and nudges their friend. One of the quotes. Okay, yeah, this music definitely sounds a little more... disastrous. They both frown and laugh at the message, and I get the horrible feeling it's more the mocking kind of laugh. At this point, I'm seeing red. If we weren't in school, I would have punched those inconsiderate pricks by now. No one should be this rude to Sayori. No one messes with my little angel here and gets away with it. Okay, well. <laughs> she's probably the sweetest person I've ever met. Yes, she is. She's too good and pure for this world. None of you deserve her. Despite how obvious... Despite the now obvious disruptions, she's still trying her best and is making a real effort to continue. To her credit, her performance is still commendable. She manages to work the contrast of her enunciation against the words in her favor. It adds an interesting depth to the poem. I'd love to see more of this side to her. She brings her performance to a close, hands shaking slightly. Lovely poem, Sayori. You really brought... Oh. You really brought that one to life. Thank you. Something's off with her voice. It's like how she was on Friday. Monica stands up, turning to address everyone in the room. Down and back! Just a polite reminder that it would be much appreciated if everyone could give our poets some respect while they're performing. If not, I'll kill you! Okay, no. Natsuki looks... Er, ah. <laughs> Monica looks stern while Natsuki looks positively furious. Thank you. Now the stage is all yours, Yuri. Yuri is looking terrified at this point. Sayuri gives her a reassuring squeeze, and I lean over, whispering into her ear. You've got this, Yuri. Just pretend it's only me, Natsuki, Sayori, and Monica. I... I can't do this, Daniel. Yes, you can. I believe you. Believe in the Daniel that believes in you. I've seen how passionate you can become when you talk about Portrait of Markov. Really? Because we haven't talked about this yet at all. Eh. Well, I guess that's just me being nitpicky at this point. Okay, actually, I'm gonna guess that this is gonna be the exact same if I were to pick not Yuri's route. Okay, well, whatever. I loved that, seeing that side of you. Besides, like you said, this club could be the perfect place... Eh. Uh, this club could be the perfect place for any of these people. We just don't know it yet. She swallows nervously, nodding at my words. Okay, Th thank you. She rises to her feet, poem clasped firmly to her chest and avoiding eye contact with everyone as she walks up. Her eyes flick up to glance at the classroom when she gets on stage, although she quickly ducks her head da back down to look at her poem on the podium. Th this poem is called... Er, th this poem is titled, After Image of a Crimson Eye. Her voice quivers at the start, but unlike her recitation a few days ago, or actually yes, the meek and trembling version of Yuri remains well into the poem. Uh oh. She determin she determinedly forges ahead, but I can tell she's not enjoying it in the slightest. The rest of the classroom, momentarily subdued by Monica's words, soon begins to grow louder again. After a few lines of her poem, they are even more unruly than before. Crinkling the wrappers or the crinkling of wrappers fills the air, and at a few points Yuri is almost drowned out by others' voices. I catch a few people getting up and leaving in the class leaving the classroom. And by the slight hitch in her voice it seems that Yuri's seen them as well. Her eyes stay glued to her poem now, and it looks like she's trying her hardest to ignore everyone. One boy quickly wolf whistles at Yuri causing her to jump and lower her head even more. Oh boy. She's practically shaking like a leaf. This is absolutely disgusting behavior, and I opened my mouth to say something. Uh-oh. Suddenly, Natsuki stands up, a loud scraping noise from her pushing away from the desk, drawing the attention of the students. Can you all just shut up? I'm really freaking sick of this! How can you guys be so rude? We're trying our best to show you a m our... Nah. Let me start a go. Ah, 
Let me start over. We're trying our best to show you something amazing here, and you're all just going to stomp all over our hard work like this? Unbelievable. I can't even understand how people can be this arrogant. Ugh, just this plain terrible. I didn't want to interrupt you, Yuri, but I can't stand it anymore. You idiots might as well just leave if you aren't going... If you're going to pretend to... Uh, you idiots might as well just leave if you aren't even going to pretend to pay attention. Okay. Get the hell out of here. There's a complete silence for a beat. Oh boy, it's a new character. Only came for the food anyway. Let's go, guys. Okay, well, I guess the peanut gallery is leaving now. Once this boy speaks up and begins to lead his friends away, one by one, more students start to follow them out the door. Fine, we don't need you. I throw a panic glance over to Monica, who is holding a strange, stiff expression on her face. She's resisting the urge to kill. I don't know. She looks like she's struggling to stay calm for everyone. Pretty much. After a few moments, there's barely anyone left. Yuri, meanwhile, be quickly begins speaking again, but her voice is barely audible. There's just stifling silence accompanying her words. When she finishes, a weak smattering of applause sounds from the few who are left. She unsteadily steps down from the stage, a blank look on her face. She won't look at any of us either. I'm worried about her. Uh, okay. Monica's voice cracks as she speaks up. She's still trying her best to see us through this. I don't think any of us could have predicted that it would turn out this way. Ahem. <laughs> Thank you, Yuri. You did wonderfully. I'm sincerely sorry for all the disruption and sheer arrogance, arrogance you had to endure. Those kinds of people really are the worst. To those who are left, I want to thank you all for staying and apologize as well. This is definitely not a normal occurrence for the Literature Club, I can assure you. Well, let's finish this off with Daniel, then. With a heavy heart, I slowly get up and walk onto the stage. When I get to the podium, I'm appalled by the side of the classroom. Candy and cupcake wrappers are strewn across the floor, and quote cards are tossed about, with many of the cards now featuring shoe prints over the words. The remnants of the goodie bags are left ripped apart on the desks. Even the kanji curtain looks tangled up and messy. The only students left are the ones who waved to Monica at the beginning. This is what Yuri had to see when reciting her poem. No wonder she didn't want to look up and face these people. Do I really... Can I really do this now? How were the others able to finish their poems? I look at the clock. Only 10.20. Has it really only been 20 minutes? Apparently so. Taking a shaky breath, I begin to speak. Hi everyone! I'd like to take a second to apologize as well, both to those checking out the club today, and to those who are already in it. But despite everything that's happened, I can say that I'm glad I joined since I got to meet so many amazing people. I believe you guys will love it as much as I did too. Anyhow, I hope you'll, you'll all enjoy Acquainted with the Night. I start reading, and am struck once again by the beauty of the poem. The loneliness and isolation conveyed so accurately, I can relate to a lot of these feelings. I won't be as good as the others at reciting, but I can only hope that I'll be able to do the poem justice. Thoughts of doing both the poet and the club proud strengthened my spirit, and I managed to fight through the depressing mood. The quiet of the classroom suits the lines of the poem well, and my recital seems to fly by rather quickly. Excellent performance, Daniel! Way to round off the event! As I step down from the stage, Monica stands up and addresses the room. It's like, there's only like ten people left. Thank you all for coming and staying. I truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. That's it for the scheduled recitations, but you guys are free to stay and hang out if you want. There's an awkward silence for a few moments, and then the remaining students start to stand up. And let me guess, they leave. Uh, Shiori. 
Hey, Monica. Oh, and hey, you too, Daniel. Or, oops. <laughs> hey, Monica. Oh, and you too, Daniel. I didn't know you were in this club. The girl standing before us is actually my homeroom's class representative, Shiori. Given that both she and Monica are class reps, they're probably friends. Yeah, I only joined about a week ago, so... Ah, I see, I see. Yep. Hey, the way you guys were treated was seriously awful. It's fine. <laughs> Thanks for staying. Either way, sorry about everything, Monica. I'll check out the club sometime. She gives us a small... commiserate... commiseratory smile. Commiseratory smile. And I'm torn between wondering whether everyone's pitting us or sympathizing with us. I don't need your charity. They all start to file out of the classroom after a few more goodbyes. Monica keeps a strained smile plastered on her face. Meanwhile, Yuri has her face buried in her arms on the desk. Poor thing probably died of embarrassment. Especially with some idiot trying to flirt with her. In contrast, Yuri is... Er, ah. Natsuki is staring straight ahead, gritting her teeth, and Saria looks down at her desk, picking a spot on the vanished the varnished wood. Holy moly. <laughs> you weren't kidding. There, To say there's tension in the air would be a massive understatement. There's silence in the room, made worse by the sense of awkwardness. No one knows what to say. No one expected the festival to end this way, and the impact is hitting us all. So, that could have gone better. My attempt at humor falls flat, and I immediately regret speaking. Very poor choice of words there. Natsuki gives me, uh, Natsuki gives me a dirty look, but Sayori smiles wanly. Meanwhile, it looks like Monica's face has finally fallen. I don't understand. Where did we go wrong, guys? We didn't go wrong. It was just the peanut gallery who kind of up and ruined everything. We spent so long preparing for this, and after all our efforts. For the first time, that outgoing confidence Monica always seemed to radiate has snuffed out. She clearly cared a lot about this event, and I feel awful for her. I know, I don't get it either. I thought you guys all did such a good job as well. The decorations, the recitals. I'm sorry, Monica. Ah, oh, don't worry about it, Daniel. It's not like it's your fault anyway. She smiles weakly at me. Glancing around, I notice that Yuri and Natsuki seem particularly upset, with Yuri looking absolutely dejected, and Natsuki steaming mad. This is your fault, Monica. I told you this was a stupid idea. Oh no. Don't pour salt in the wounds, Natsuki. Now isn't a good time. None of us were e even that comfortable with doing it in the first place. Now look where it's landed us. Yep. I could have seen this coming. Oh boy. Just, oh boy. Excuse me? My fault? You all agreed to this. Pardon me for thinking it would actually go well. What's so wrong about that? We only agreed to it because we felt like you were forcing us. I was really hoping this wouldn't happen. Me too. Given everyone's low moods, an argument is the last thing we need. I didn't force anyone, Natsuki. You know how much this club means to me. I was just excited to show what we have to the rest of the school. Yeah, because it was that was such a good idea, wasn't it? I'm really starting to get sick of your constant sarcasm, you know. Why can't we just try being positive or why can't you just try being positive for once in your life? Gee, it's funny you should say that, because I'm really starting to get sick of your self-righteous know-it-all attitude. Oh boy, I really don't like where this is going. We told you this was a bad idea, but no! You just had to insist on this, even though no one was happy with it. It was for a reason. Look at how much Daniel enjoys it here. Please do not drag me into this. Just... Please. Is it really so unreasonable to think that we could have found someone else like him? Or 
Is that just too positive for you to even fathom? This is awful. No, it's not awful. It's disastrous. It's catastrophic. It's gut-wrenching. The other students were bad enough, but now Monica and Natsuki are going for each other's throats. Look at how badly everyone was humiliated. How inconsiderate all of those... those... She struggles for a moment, her anger in inhibiting her ability to speak. Those assholes were! To all of us! They didn't give a damn about anything we had to say. What did that one prick say? He was only here for the food? All that hard work, just for what? Nothing. She... Uh, she angrily kicks one of the desks. The loud noise jolts Yuri, who looks up with tears in her eyes. Oh, Yuri. Man, poor Yuri. But please, Natsuki, can you calm down? Don't tell me you're taking her side, Yuri. You had to experience the worst of it. I don't get why you're not mad either. Natsuki, there's no point in being angry at Monica. She didn't want this to happen. She had no idea people would react this way. It's bad enough that people were rude, and I really don't like the idea. Or, and I really don't like fighting inside the club itself. Neither do I. Yeah, yeah, but if Natsuki... Or, let me try that again. Yeah, yeah, but if Monica had just listened to us when we said we weren't comfortable with the whole idea, this never would have happened. Monica sighs. This is the kind of conflict that she generally leaves for Sayori to deal with. I don't think Sayori's going to be able to do anything in this case. But in this case, Sayori looks too distraught to intervene. Exactly. Look... What you're not understanding is that sometimes you have to take risks. Sure, this didn't go well, but there was always a chance it wouldn't have ended like this and we could have had new members. She turns to me. Please don't drag me into this. I don't I don't want to get in between it, this fighting. I mean, you of all people can understand the best, right, Daniel? You made the choice to come here. Just look at how much you enjoy it. Oh, don't you try and suck up to him, Monica. Face it, you never listen to us, your club members, or take our opinions into account. Tell me, I'm not alone in thinking that, Daniel. Oh, no. Oh, great, now I have to choose a side. I really don't want to do this. I desperately look at Yuri and Sayori, but both look too upset to want to get involved. Oh, uh, no. Okay, well, it's note-taking time. Okay, so I'm gonna call this... Let's see here. Festival Argument. Uh, oh my god. Okay, well... Uh, well, I'm sorry, Monica. It pains me to do this. It really pains me to do this. I don't want to kick you while you're feeling down. I know you put your heart and soul into this, but... Well... Like, I'm trying... This is just a means to an end, okay? A good end, hopefully. <laughs> I really do hate taking sides like this. Monica's the president, though, and I hope she won't take this personally. And possibly kick me and Natsuki out of here. Oh, well, remember how I said that we might leave the literature club? Well, I hope that's not an ending. Monica, believe me when I say that I know this club means a lot to you. I've only been here a few days and I can already see that. In fact, it means a lot to all of us. Every one of us cares so much for the club that we were able to soldier on and keep performing despite all the crap we got. But at the same time, perhaps Natsuki has a point. You were clearly the most enthusiastic about this festival out of everyone here. <sighs> Man.
man. I almost feel like, what have I done? She sighs, and it's clear that she's frustrated. It wouldn't surprise me if she was disappointed in us either. Man, I... Ugh. It's like, well, in a sense, no matter what I chose, I would have felt like a jerk either way. I would have been invalidating Natsuki's feelings. Or in this case, I would have been literally kicking Monica when she was feeling down. <sighs> oh my god, I feel awful. Well, pardon me for wanting the club to do well. Why was everyone so against it? I didn't even force any of you. You all agree to the... of your own accords. I thought you'd use the weekend to practice. That should have been plenty of time. The problem wasn't the practicing. The problem was the audi- <clears throat> The problem was the audience. The way you pushed us into it, it felt like we didn't have a choice. You guys didn't ha you guys didn't have to agree. Do you not know how to stand up for yourselves? Monica, you you know how it is. It's hard enough as it is having to go against your friends, but when your friend has such high expectations for everything on top of that, it's just easy to get swept up in trying to keep everyone happy. And on top of that, not everyone here is as outspoken as you. Exactly. But that's not the point, anyhow. You all did fine in your first reactions during our club meeting. Everything should have gone well. Oh my god, please, Monica, just no. No, 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 no. It's just that... It's just that we never could have expected that people would act this way. That's... that's the problem. The problem wasn't the reciting, it was... Stupid assholes who came in here to heckle us. If the event had been a success, you can bet that this conversation wouldn't be happening right now. I'm sure it wouldn't, but clearly that's not the case here. Well, if we never decided to do anything for the festival, then we wouldn't have had to worry about this crap anyway. But we had to do something for the festival. Do you guys just want the club to remain stagnant forever? Is this place just supposed to be some hangout for five people? There's a fierce glint in those green eyes now, and I'm almost afraid of speaking up. It seems like I'm the only one here who actually wants this club to do well. The only one who strives for greater heights. And how is anyone ever going to see how amazing what we've built is... Let's see, and how is anyone ever going to see... How amazing what we've built is if we never show it to anyone. What's wrong with the club being small? I'd rather have a few people who actually care than a ton of idiots who are only here because of your popularity. Oh my god. You're just burying yourself deeper, Natsuki. And you're just gonna make her feel worse and worse and... Ugh. Like I said, if I haven't said it enough, I, I really do feel like a jerk to Monica right now. Quality is more important than quantity, after all. I'm sure the others would agree on that front as well. This is basically what happened in the purest mod, except with a very sinister turn of events. Because it's like, we... Oh, in the... In that ending, or in that mod, like, they all came to the same realization, like... You know, like, those guys, we don't need them. The club is fine as it is, small and intimate, with just friends here, hanging out. So... Suddenly, Monica turns to face me. I won't lie, it's scary having to see the full force of a normally cool-headed and diplomatic leader's temper. Oh my god, I don't even want to imagine Monica angry. Daniel, with all due respect, you haven't been here for a week. You haven't even been here for a week. How could you of all people know what the other members want? Monica, Daniel only means well. Sorry, looks like she's about to say more, but one withering look from Monica stops her in her tracks. 
And I'm sure that many villains throughout history only meant well to... Oh my... What are you trying to say here? Now you're just being unfair. No. You know what's really unfair? What's unfair is the fact that I'm the one who always has to pick up the slack. I'm the one who has to take the blame for all the mistakes. You think it's easy living up to everyone's expectations? Although I guess it's too much for you to understand, Natsuki. After all, you always heap the blame onto others and criticize everyone but yourself. Why don't you go do some introspection for once in your life? Then you might be able to see why you barely have any friends. Oh my god. <sighs> I just feel like, what? Well, I honestly feel at this point it almost wouldn't matter who I chose. Like I said, I would have felt like a jerk to either one of these girls. And, well, now they're going at each other's throats and really, really hitting them the others. One is hitting the other where it really hurts. And I am pretty sure this is a sore spot for Natsuki. I knew it. There's a silence for a moment. A silence that lengthen lengthens into impossibly long minutes. I look towards Yuri and Sayori for help, but both look understandably shocked by Monica's words. Natsuki's face has grown red, and it looks like she's starting to tear up despite her best attempts at keeping up a hostile look. Monica, on the other hand, has turned away so I can't see her face. S Yuri, Sayori, and I exchange a series of looks and expressions as the silence stretches out. There's a vertible game of eyebrow charades going on between the three of us. None of us know what to say or how to break the silence, but we all know that someone has to. I'm relieved that I have the two of them to rely on here, though. They had to experience the disaster that was the festival, too. And yet, they're still fighting through their own emotions to try and keep the club together. The only sounds right now are the small, sniffling noises coming from Natsuki. The longer the silence stretches, the harder it's going to be to break it. Somehow the three of us manage to sound soundlessly decide that it should be me to speak up. Well, I guess in this case, yeah. Even though I'm pretty sure Monica hates me with the passion of a thousand burning suns right now. But before I can do so, we're surprised by Monica finally interrupting the silence with a sigh. You're right, Monica, you shouldn't have said that. Ugh, man. Well, one thing I can say is... The fact that I'm getting so emotional and worked up about this really means that I'm really getting immersed into this mod, so... I, if I haven't said it enough to the people who have worked on this mod, my hat is off to you. You've done a fantastic job at fleshing out what was, in my opinion, a sort of bare-bones story. Something that even the purest mod kind of tried to do, but kind of fell short in some aspects, even though the purest mod did kind of, well, I guess if for whatever reason anyone wants to watch it, my playthrough of it, I did like it. I liked the endings and all that. I liked the characterization of all four of the girls, and in some points, I even started crying like in the middle of the playthrough. Especially with, like, Yuri and Sayori's play routes. Anyways, back to the show. I... I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, but you did. And even if you say that you didn't mean it, the fact is you thought it. And the idea that words can never hurt you, well... Sometimes... 
words, especially if they come from someone who means something to us. Friends, family, the people that we love. Anything hurtful coming out of their mouths hurts us the deepest. I was looking back on what I said and, well, if someone had said those things about me, I'd be upset to say the least. The pressure just finally broke me, I guess. I really do have tons of things going on in my life. But that doesn't excuse my actions. I shouldn't assume things about your lives when I have no idea what struggles you're going through either. Yeah, you have no idea what this little lady here is going through in her life. So yeah, she does not need that. I don't expect you to forgive me anytime soon, but just know that I'm sorry. Monica is still turned away, but Sayori shoots me a hopeful look. I think it's safe to say that words were said that no one really intended. But as I said, the fact of the matter still remains that she still thought it. Both of them still thought, at some point, all the hurtful things they said. And even if they didn't mean them, they still said them. Tensions were obviously running high after the disaster that the festival turned out to be, and I guess everything just boiled over in the argument. I agree, and it just shows... and it just goes to show how much we care about the club and each other. If we didn't care, we wouldn't be feeling so horrible. Monica, you're really good at organizing these kinds of things, so I can really see why you wanted it to succeed the way you did. It's only normal. But you have to remember that we all chose to come here for a reason, and that's because we enjoy it here. We really do care. I'm sorry if it seems like we're blaming you for everything going wrong, because it's definitely no one's fault. Exactly, it's the peanut gallery's fault. Monica starts to slowly turn back to face us. But you have to admit that you were kind of harsh to Natsuki. Yeah. She stops moving, causing Sayori to speed on through her speech. Anyway, I'm so glad that you apologized to Natsuki in the end, because we're all friends here, and we need to stick together. Well, that's a nice sentiment, but... I'm still waiting to hear what Natsuki has to say about this. We shouldn't be fighting when we hit obstacles. We should be supporting each other. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive her, Natsuki, even though she said some really mean things to you. Yeah, I don't know. And hopefully we can move on from this and become closer than ever. I, c I couldn't have said it better myself. Well, Natsuki's... Well, I don't think she's crying anymore. Yes, I believe that the best thing that we can do right now is try to forgive each other and learn from this experience. Monica faces us now, looking each of us in the eye. Natsuki misses her gaze, still looking down at the ground with tear-streaked cheeks. You guys, thank you for being the best club members I could wish for. Now that I've thought about it, it really is me who's in the wrong here. <laughs> I should have just accepted that you guys weren't quite as into the festival idea as I was. It was wrong of me to push you into something you weren't comfortable with. Well, that's all said and done now, so no use crying over spilt milk, right? No, a good president wouldn't have pressured their people into doing this. Looking back, how could I have been so selfish and blind? Everyone has moments, momentary lapses of judgment, and you shouldn't blame yourself for that. I'm with Yuri on that. After all, you made this lovely club for all of us, and we really owe it to you for that. And Natsuki, I'm truly sorry for what I said. I was just jumping to conclusions and making false assumptions. Plus, we're all your friends. Although, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't want to call me a friend anymore. We all await with bated breath for Natsuki's answer. Yeah, me included in this. I exchange nervous glances with Yuri and Sayori, 
the latter of the two actually looking like she's holding her breath. Okay, here we go. Natsuki quickly wipes the tears off of her face with her sleeves. She looks smaller than ever, and so alone. It makes me want to protect her more than ever. Whatever. It's fine. Well, she says that, but... Well, I know that there's more going on. The only thing I ask... She looks down at the floor, then to her right, and then at the ceiling. It's as if she's hoping for the right words to appear in front of her. The only thing I want is for us to stop fighting. I come to this club to get away from all that junk, and I don't want things to be ruined. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to really say much of anything, but... For any of you who know the original game, then yeah, you, you pretty much have an idea of what I'm getting at here. So yeah, if it'll make things go back to normal... I'll forgive you. Sire gives a little hop in excitement when Natsuki says that, and I can't help but sigh in relief as well. Monica gently smiles at Natsuki, who finally meets her eyes. Thank you for putting the club above your own feelings, Natsuki. Yo, I don't think I'm in the wrong in saying that we all appreciate it. You guys should hug it out. I get that it must have taken a lot to say that, so I'm truly grateful for that. Monica reaches out to hug Natsuki, but the smaller girl flinches away. Ah, I'm sorry. I should have known that it'd be too soon. No, well, it's fine. Natsuki makes an attempt at smiling at Monica. It may take some time for a reconciliation to be finished with, but I'm happy that everyone is trying their best. Yeah, reconsideration can take a lot of time, a long time. Retribution. No, that's not quite right. <laughs> well, close enough. And with that, the spell holding us all in place seems to have been broken. Any of you staying to check out the rest of the festival? No, I'm feeling quite exhausted after all the emotional stress we've had to endure. Me too. All I want to do right now is take a long nap. Same here, honestly. Uh, we still have to clean up the classroom, though. Yeah, because the peanut gallery made a huge mess of it. We all grimly turn to face the mess that the visitors have left behind. I'm not really looking forward to cleaning that up. But someone's got to do it. Ah, uh, do we have to? Like I said, someone's gotta do it. Sayori, you don't want to betray our club's advisors, or club advisors' trust, do you? I wonder who our club advisor is. Probably no one we know. Ah, uh, why are you always right, Yuri? Everyone chuckles a bit, even with Natsuki betraying a smile on her face. I'm sure that it's less work than it looks. So I think that it's fine if some of us leave early. Hey Daniel, how about you walk Natsuki home for a change? Uh, it's happening. I'm sure that Sayori's sick of your company by now. <laughs> Jeez, Monica. Damn. Way to lay the sick burns on me. <laughs> it's sweet of Monica to let Natsuki off the hook like that, and in such a casual way too. Really. This way, it doesn't look like she's babying her or anything. Hey, no fair. I want to go home too. Too bad. <laughs> Sairi pretends to pout for a bit, but quickly regains a smile on her face. Are you really sick of my company? After all the nice things I've said about you? Come on, guys. The faster we get to work, the faster we'll get to go home. After exchanging goodbyes, I walk out of the classroom with Natsuki. It's surreal to hear sounds of chatter and laughter floating towards us from the rest of the festival after everything that just took place. A silence falls between us, and I'm not quite sure whether I should try to cheer her up or just leave her alone with her thoughts. I spot a vending machine at the end of the hall and decide on the former. Here, do you want a little... Do you want a snack? A little sugar always cheers me up when I feel down. 
Uh, sure, I guess. What do you want? It, it doesn't really matter, but chocolate's pretty good. I approached the vending machine, digging change out of my pockets. Within a few moments, a solid thunk sounds from the bottom of the machine. I hand her the bar of chocolate. I just picked up... Or I just picked one of my favorites, so I hope we have similar tastes. White chocolate? Not bad. Does this mean she likes it? Well, that's probably as close of an indication as you'll get. I watch as she carefully places the snack into her bag. You're not gonna eat it? My question seems to startle Natsuki, and I feel a little bad when she jumps a bit. I guess she's still feeling a little shaky. Uh, no, I kind of like to savor things in my own time. Hmm, not a bad idea. I tend to blow through snacks and stuff myself. <laughs> I guess I'd like to try and make things last as long as possible. That's pretty understandable. With that, another silence falls over us. And this time, it's a comfortable silence. We walk together, side by side, in a bubble of companionship that seems to include just the two of us, and that makes the festival a distant reality. It isn't until we've reached the school entrance that I break the silence again. Which way are you heading? Or, yeah, which way are you headed? I'm going that way. I point to my left, causing Natsuki to give me a wry smile. I'm in the opposite direction. Hey, well, Monica told us to walk her home. Let's be a gentleman and walk her home. Oh. Well, guess I'll see you tomorrow then. You're the worst gentleman ever. Daniel? Huh? It's okay if I keep coming to the club, right? Why would you even think that? Of course it'd be okay. My god, she's still kind of... I guess she's still kind of rattled up. Huh? What do you mean? Of course you can. I mean, we're all going to be expecting you back there. Expecting you back there. And never mind. See ya! I hope that doesn't mean I'm not going to get to see her again. At that, she whirls around and darts away, leaving behind nothing but confusion in the air. Well, I guess I'll ask her about it tomorrow, given that we see her tomorrow. But for now, it's time to make the trek home. And given how long I've been recording, I think I will go ahead and end this session here. So, yeah. At this point, we've pretty much derailed from the original DDLC story. So everything from this point on is going to be brand new for me. And, yeah, so I guess my note-taking is going to really be coming in the clutch here. Or so I like to think. Anyways, well, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with whatever else I do. Stay golden. And later, folks.